Welcome to the TREPEX Podcast. TREP is short for entrepreneur. One of the most meaningful and rewarding, yet difficult challenges you can take on. The TREPEX Podcast gives you actionable insights, real examples, and success X factors from experienced entrepreneurs as we are learning, living, and sharing in the exciting endeavor of entrepreneurship. Now here's your fellow entrepreneurial traveler and host, Mickey Dimming. Hello, welcome to the TREPEX Podcast. This is Mickey Dimming, and today I want to share another interview with you. I got a chance to interview Michelle Evans. She is the business owner at michellelevans.com. She helps entrepreneurs, solopreneurs with their marketing, which she has a lot of helpful, actionable advice on marketing that I think anyone listening to this could take away from because a lot of times marketing can be overwhelming because we think of all these different tactics, things we can do. And what Michelle really is helping people do is, number one, understand who they're serving and how that impacts your language, the way you um, message everything on your website, and also understanding who you are. And I think that's something we miss a lot of times, and we try to imitate what other people do. But what works for someone else may not work for you. Uh, we all have different strengths. And so she she talks about how knowing yourself and your own strengths can really uh, impact your marketing strategy. So Michelle spent several years at Microsoft. Then she transitioned into being an entrepreneur on her own. And so we talk about that transition and all she's learned in that. She's a marketing expert and uh, very, very helpful uh, to entrepreneurs out there. So had a great time talking to her. Check out her website at michellelevans.com. She has a ton of free content and articles all over the place that will be really helpful. So really appreciated all she had to share. Thank you uh, for listening to this episode. You can see the episode at trepexgroup.com. And I hope you enjoy uh, this interview with Michelle Evans. Hello, Michelle. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Thanks so much for having me, Mickey. I'm great. It's a rainy day, but I'm great. Your enthusiasm does not sound rainy. You sound bright and excited right now. You know, I've lived in Seattle just about all my life, and so I'm kind of used to the rainy weather in the winter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm we are in Illinois, and it's snowing, so got the got to scrape off the car this morning, which is kind of a fun start to the day. You, you don't want it too much, but it's kind of motivating. Yeah, we we get snow about once every five years, so <laughs> we're out oh, of practice. Man. You're missing out. You're missing out. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for this, too. I'm really glad that you could join, and I have so much to talk to you about. And I first want to just hear more about your entrepreneurial journey. I think it's always fun to hear how people have gotten into it. So just to start, can you share what it is that, that you're working on right now and, and what business you have going? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting that you ask that and talk about the journey because the business I'm doing right now is not exactly what I left my corporate job to do when I first left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you know, you know, things evolve over time as you learn and grow. But the business I'm working on right now is um, – Really, it's a it's a fun evolution, but it's helping solopreneurs like people like coaches, consultants, experts, service professionals figure out how to go from being really good at what they do to being sold out. And so many people hate this idea of marketing themselves or going out and networking. And even though, you know, my background is in marketing, I'm actually about 20 years of doing marketing professionally. I had the same thing when I first started doing my business. I was like, now I have to go, wait, I have to sell myself. I, I can sell other people and I can market other people, but now you want me to sell myself? That's mm -hmm. not fun. In fact, I don't know if you saw it, but last week I wrote an article for the Huffington Post that was in the business section that talked about my god-awful first networking meeting that I went to and just what I learned from doing that. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I, I think that is hard. I think it's, it's easy to promote other things. And then but when you're promoting yourself, you're really putting yourself out there. And, and it's kind of like your identity is on the line. If people say no, then you it's like they're rejecting who you are as a person. <laughs> and so yes. it's a lot scarier, especially when you're first starting, I think, and you're not mm -hmm. totally competent and comfortable in what you're offering. For sure. I, at least for me and for the people I work with, that's what happens for sure. Right. That makes sense. I think uh, Seth Godin has advice on that where he says get, to get really good at saying 
of being comfortable saying it's not for you. So if someone says no, it doesn't mean that you're a horrible person. It's just it's not for you. It's not for that person. Figure out who it is for. And I think that that's a helpful way to look at at that, you know, uh, roadblock in in, uh, putting yourself out there. I think it's a helpful way. I think um, I don't know about you, but I've had those times where somebody said no and it's been crushing. So Mm -hmm. it's like you kind of have to develop that muscle, too. It's not something that you just go, oh, yeah, it's not for you. And and the first time you move on, I think you have to keep or at least for me, I have to keep reminding myself it's okay. Right. It's yeah. It's easier said than done yeah. than when you actually hear something <laughs> negative. Uh, but yeah. So you you can help people with that, and I think you have uh, the ability to because you have actually gone through it and you have put yourself out there. So let's back up. You mentioned that you uh, came from a corporate environment working for Microsoft. So how did that all come together, and when did you decide to jump into starting your own business? Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, is that I always wanted my own business. I even I went to business school when I was in college, but I could never really envision what that would be doing marketing because I didn't I knew I didn't want to be an ad agency. Um, And so I just I couldn't just see like, what do I do with this? So I ended up working for 16 years in corporate. I worked in banking. I worked at a dot com and I worked at Microsoft for the last five years of my corporate career. And, you know, I just got to a place. In fact, um, I won a ton of awards when I was at Microsoft, uh, even before that, but at Microsoft. And I won this huge award the year that I had my son. Um, And when I was on maternity leave, I went in and I got my award and I had lunch with the chief marketing officer. And then I went and got my um, review. And my boss said, hey, Michelle, you've done great work. You've been in the high potential program. You know, we really value you, but I'm just going to let you know, next year you're going to have a middle of the road review because you're on maternity leave. And that was just like a knife to the gut. Mm. I was like, ah, you know, I, in fact, I was angry. But the thing is, is that I had been wanting to go out on my own for a long time, but I just kept getting raises and, you know, just all these things that made it seem hard to go. And that was just that moment where I was like, and now I'm done. (laughs) <laughs> and yeah. I went home that night and opened my business and I spent the next six and a half months lining up clients before I left my job. Wow. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. That, I think that's common. I've heard that a lot on this podcast where people know that they need to do it for a long time, but they don't make the move until something finally clicks and they, and they choose to do it. And even sometimes it's like it clicks and then it still takes some time. So, but you, for you, like when you had that moment, that was it. You knew right then and there you were going to make that move. Is that, yeah. is it really that quick? It, it, re- I mean, let me just be clear. I had been thinking about it for a long time Sure. and like, you know, things were bugging me. I, I feel like it was kind of this balloon that was getting bigger and bigger. And that was just like that final burst that just popped it. Yeah. But, um, and that, that boss and I are friends to today, you know, it's not okay. like I'm angry at him. It was in that <laughs> moment. I was thinking, I don't want somebody else to have control over me and how much I make and what opportunities I have simply because I had a baby. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I, you hear that story and it kind of makes, it makes me mad. So <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Uh, and so you made that move, but a, a key point there though, is you didn't, you know, get mad and quit that day you started working on the side. So can you talk like, what was that like to balance the two? You were continuing to work for Microsoft, but you were starting this business. How were you able to, and you were a mom, how are you balancing all those things at once? Yeah, well, and uh, my son's my third one. So <laughs> I had two yeah. older ones as well. So he was about seven weeks old when I made that choice. And I was still on maternity leave for about another, uh, I don't know, month and a half or so. Um, so I was, you know, sleep deprived and all crazy, but what I did is I just sat down and I started thinking like, what are the problems that I want to solve? What are the Mm -hmm. skills that I have? Who do I know that might need services like what I do? And I just started reaching out to people in my network. Um, I wouldn't say, I mean, networking is not my favorite thing, but I do love to make connections. I think that's actually why I like podcasting is because I feel like you get to have more of a connection. It's not so much of a 
fly by. But Definitely. in my in my corporate days, I made a lot of connections with people that I worked on projects with, um, people in professional organizations that I was a part of, like the American Marketing Association, just all around. And I just started reaching out to people. Um, some people who had made the leap already, I wanted to know what they did and what they learned and what they do differently. Uh, and if they had work for me <laughs> and then people who, you know, like were at Microsoft or who had been laid off from Microsoft and gone other places, I reached out to see if they might have anything that um, that they would want to hire me for. And just from that, I had enough momentum to um, replace my income quickly. So when I left my job, I had enough jobs lined up that it replaced my income. Now, that doesn't mean that the leap to entrepreneurship was easy. I mean, it was, was still scary and I still had some learning to do and like, how do you balance getting work with doing the work and all that? But I just saw that, you know, I could take my my financial life into my own hands and and make this work. Oh, I love that. That's that's awesome. And and you, you touched on several things that are really important. I think the first is just the, the approach to networking and people hear that word and they think a lot of different things, but for you, it was basically just talking to friends and yeah. making friends and having connections and doing it slowly and one by one. We're, so you mentioned this at the beginning, like what were some of the mental challenges that you had and was there some of that self doubt and, Oh, I can't do this. Like how, how did you work through some of those things as you were first deciding to get this started. Yeah, like the red face and sweaty palm moments. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's, I don't think that I had so much of like, I can't do this. It was more like, will anybody pay me to do this was right. more of the question. And so I had what I had to learn is how to objectively look at the service that I provided and price it right talk about it in a way that was um, exciting to people. And I'm not going to lie, that took a while. The people that hired me and that I replaced my income with, they knew me well and they knew I could do that work. So it wasn't like a huge sale. It was more about, are you available? You know, can I mm -hmm. plug you in? That kind of thing. But those contracts weren't indefinite. They were just, you know, sure. projects. And so I had to start to learn how to do this. And it was hard. And at the same time, I was simultaneously building a coaching business. Um, so I, like I was, <laughs> I wasn't satisfied with just having one business. Now I wanted two and the, the coaching piece that I did, I laugh now, but I started, um, a career coaching business because that's what I knew from my corporate days. Right. But looking back on it, I'm like, why did I decide to do career coaching? Because a, I no longer believed in jobs. B, I really didn't care about the problems. You know, like I was just doing it because I felt like that's what I should do. And that that business went down in flames. I mean, I got quite a few clients, but um, nothing long term. And I never really like got traction there because I wasn't super excited about it. So I think also what if you're if you're thinking about jumping into a business or if you're in one that maybe you're not so excited about, but you felt like you should do. I dumped that business and I had paying clients and I had workshops and all sorts of things, but I dumped it and switched over to what I'm doing now, probably two and a half, almost three years ago. And that was one of the best decisions I ever made. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I think that's probably um, something you have to work through in that process is like, well, at first you just do everything, <laughs> you know, because yep. it's just, I have to do this and anyone that will pay me, then I will say yes and find a way to make it work. Yep. <laughs> and then you eventually transition. And I think that's what you're now at the point where you have a very good understanding of what it is you want to be doing and what that's worth. Can you talk about how that evolved for you, you know, going from um, taking everything to really building systems and uh, finding your strengths? How did you make that work uh, in your own business? Yeah, I mean, I think it takes taking a few clients who are not very good fits for you and yeah. having to work through that. I mean, I, I would love to say that there's a magical way to <laughs> to skip past some of that learning, but there really isn't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like it's an organic thing and who I'm working with today might not be who I want to work with in five years too. So, you know, you have to give yourself permission to do what's right right now and make changes for the future as mm -hmm. as they feel right. And for yeah, me, it was yeah. really like, do I like this work or not? 
do I look forward to this work or does it feel really hard and draining? And it can be as simple as those questions. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think the the only way to scale, the only way to find out how to price things is to really get overwhelmed and then figure out, okay, where where could this be smoother? You know, it's hard, you can't just map it all out on a whiteboard ahead of time. You just have to get overwhelmed and then you kind of learn how to solve it. Uh, when you're in it. So yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, and I'm the nerdy, you know, like ex Microsofty. I love to map things on whiteboards <laughs> and do strategy, but it, you know, I, I just, it doesn't work in a, in a small, small business. Yeah, no, it, it really doesn't. It, it's, it's learned by experience and by being overwhelmed. And of course, you know, coaching and network, yeah. the network is a huge part of that. You know, you get around people who are, have been through it before. It's, it's silly to ignore that. And so I think that's something you've done really, really well. Is that, I mean, is that really a key piece too, is just those people that you surround yourself with helping you uh, figure some of these things out a little faster? Yeah. I'm so glad that you talked about that. So I have always had a coach. I've had coaches since 2007, um, first career coaches and now uh, business coaches. That investment has always been huge. And then um, I'm in a mastermind and I've been in mastermind since I left my job since about six months after I went full time in my business, just surrounding yourself with people who are going through similar things and who, you know, might be slightly ahead in some areas and can help you navigate those speed bumps is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's crucial. I mean, and it's silly to, to try to reinvent the whale when other people have been there or are dealing with it. And, and I know, so that is a nice transition into where uh, you are now. And now you're not only living it as an entrepreneur, but you're also sharing a lot of what you've learned with other entrepreneurs who are in, you know, where you were or trying to figure these things out. And, and a lot of that centers around your marketing expertise. And I love your website because I think marketing is one of the most challenging things right now just for this, the business world because there's so many different things you can do and it's overwhelming and you know it can feel like, wow, what am I supposed to be doing? There's like a, a million different case studies that I have to learn from and all this stuff. And, and your website, your messaging is really centered around results, like simplifying and getting results. And so can you share just at a broad level how you approach marketing and how you um, teach others um, to start thinking about marketing? Yeah, absolutely. So um, thank you for the compliment on my site. So I wrote a blog post, I don't know, a few months back called 103 Ways to Get More Clients. And I wrote that because I've done all 103 things <laughs> over the course of 20 years, right? Like I've done and seen it all. And what I know for a fact is that usually – Two or three things are what bring you clients Mm -hmm. and everything else probably doesn't need to be done or should be automated. And so what I do when I'm working with clients is I really help them figure out, first of all, what it is their business is all about. Like, what are they selling? What's the problem they're solving? How do their people talk about it? Where's the value? Uh, Because a lot of times uh, people's marketing is kind of convoluted because they're not super clear on those pieces. Um, and without knowing the problem that you're solving and how people think about it, talk about it, how it affects them, it's hard to come up with a marketing message because you're kind of just like throwing spaghetti against the wall, trying to put the right words that's going to be that aha. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we start there, but after that, we take a look at, you know, are you somebody who really likes to speak? Do you like to speak on podcasts? Do you like to speak on stages? Do you, like, what do you like to do? Do you like to write? Do you like, how do you want to get visibility? Is it ads? Like, what is it? And so, um, have you ever taken how to fascinate the how to fascinate test? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I use that a lot with my clients. Um, and for people who don't know, so I, like we're not getting paid for this, but Sally Hogshead, uh, created this, um, twist on a personality test called how to fascinate. And it's really her whole premise is you don't have to learn how to be fascinating. You have to unlearn how to be boring. And I really took that to heart in terms of marketing, because I think that's the same. Like you don't, you Mickey don't have to do what I do. 
we're not the same. We don't have the same kind of business. We don't, probably don't have the same kind of clients. You need to find what it is that makes you fascinating. And so we spend some time figuring out what are those two or three things that you can absolutely kill to market your business that, um, you know, might be scary when you start, but that are in your skill house. So you're not, um, struggling. Like if you hate social media, that you're not struggling to constantly do that. Um, and that really bring you results. And how do you build out those funnels to bring results? So that's a long convoluted answer, but Mm -hmm. it's really, you know, which one of the, which one of the major ways to get visibility works best for you? No, I think that that's a phenomenal answer. I think there's, there's so much into that and so much wisdom. And really what you're talking about is two, two separate things. One is knowing who you're serving, knowing who that customer is and what they're wanting. And, and I think that it gets said so often that people are like, oh yeah, I know. I already thought about that. And, uh, it's, we can miss how important that is to get really, really specific on it. But the other thing you talked about, I think is actually not a, talked about as often. It's equally important though, is knowing yourself, like knowing, like just because I read a post that says this person did this to grow their business by whatever, that doesn't mean that's what I should do because Maybe that's that that's what they're really, really good at. Um, do you find you're kind of speaking to to both sides of that coin with your clients, you know, the knowing their who their customer is and knowing themselves? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, just like you said, most business owners that I work with will say, oh, yeah, yeah, I totally know who my clients are. Mm-hmm. They don't even really want to spend time there. And so I'll say, okay, you know, we can move on to you. But then as we start building out their message, I'm like, give me some actual quotes from people. (laughs) Tell me exactly what your people are saying. And then they don't have that. And I'm like, you know, we can we can try to, you know, create this imaginary scenario, this imaginary person and put words in their mouth. Or we could just talk to five people and ask them, what's the problem you're struggling with and see what they say. Because that is marketing gold. Um, so I, I find that a lot of times people don't want to go back and do that work, but it doesn't have to be hard, and it certainly doesn't have to take a long time at all. That's great. Yeah, I want to follow up on that because yeah. I think that's the most important thing, and that's something we've done with our business. It's like, you know, this is an interview right now, but really we started podcasting because we were already interviewing people because it's just so powerful to interview. And then we were like, well, we should probably just record them. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really how this podcast started. But you're talking about something important is like you don't have to guess you don't have to make something up out of thin air and so when people and that's one way of doing it and I know there's it's it can be really simple but when people are are in that um, kind of mindset of like oh I don't need to I already know um, or if they say you know you're right I'm not that clear on who it is that my service is the best fit for what are some exercises or things they can do that are pretty simple that allow you to get a better handle on um, who that ideal customer is. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that really trips people up in their marketing, so they'll say, gosh, you know, I did this Facebook ad or I did this post and I thought it'd be great, but I didn't get any traction or whatever. And I always go back and say, are you using jargon? Like, are you using words that make sense to you as the pro who's totally deep in this field? but doesn't connect to your people. And I swear like nine and a half times out of 10, that's usually the problem. And so what I'll say is, you know what? Here's three things that we could do. Number one, are you part of any Facebook groups where potential clients might be? Can you post something that says, hey, I have XYZ service. Uh, What questions do you have about this that I could answer? People will usually jump all over that and um, give you tons of gold. And and you don't change the phrasing that they're using. Um, you know, how you would describe marketing is different than how I would describe it if I was, you know, talking about it with marketing people. But mm-hmm. I need to use your language. Otherwise, you're going to think that I'm not talking to you. Um, the second thing is, you know what? I love Reddit. <laughs> Reddit is crazy. If you go in there, you know, they have Reddit entrepreneur, they have Reddit freelancer, they have Reddit marketing, they, you know, just tons of stuff on Reddit. People post the most brilliant questions on there and not brilliant in terms of, wow, I never thought about that, but so perfectly on point to what you want to solve. 
and you can just go in there and see what other people's comments are. I mean, it's amazing. So that's the second one. And the third one is going to Amazon and looking for book reviews for the top books and the bottom books in what you solve. I guarantee you there's probably at least a thousand books for whatever you do, Mm -hmm. unless it's a super small niche. But, um, you know, just go and see, you know, for the top rated reviews, what are people calling out that they love about that book? And for the bottom rated reviews for the same book, what are they saying? What are the questions? How are people describing the transformation that happened? There is absolute gold there. Nobody has to guess about anything. And literally, if you took one hour to just go to Reddit, post in a Facebook group and look at two or three book reviews, you would probably have all the marketing stuff you need. I like that. That's that's some gold in that just to take away and how to find those questions. What are the questions people are asking? What are the things people are saying and speak their language? I think that's really important. And it really goes full circle. So as we uh, start to wrap this up, the last question I wanted to ask about is going back to the beginning and how you said so many of the people you work with, your the biggest challenge. So they, you know, they may get really clear on who they work with. They may get really clear on what what they provide and who they are. Uh, but then there's still that roadblock of like uh, sales and selling and putting myself out there. Is this really the answer? Like when you know who you're serving really well, that it takes the focus off you. Is that, is that really how you are able to help them get to that point? Um, a little bit. It's really about, I mean, that's a, that's a piece of it for sure, mm-hmm. but it's really about establishing your expertise. So, you know, if I want to talk to people about getting more visibility, well, I better be visible so that they can see me doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and then as they start to see that it's a much easier conversation. In fact, people usually are reaching out and saying, hey, Michelle, I'd like to work with you on this. What does that look like? That's a lot easier sales conversation than, you know, going to a chamber of commerce and shaking a hundred hands and then coming home and trying to to dial up for dollars, right? It's just a different way of approaching it. And again, it doesn't have to take long. I mean, there's Facebook group strategies that you could do that, you know, you can, I did a post a week and a half ago in one of the groups I'm in and I had over a hundred people reach out to me from that, like PM me and say, Hey, can you talk to me about this? I'd like, you know, and will some of those people become clients? Yeah. And so it's just a matter of establish, like giving value first like this, but giving value in a way that serves your business because you're demonstrating what it is that you do. Yeah, no, I think that's perfect. I think just knowing who you're serving and being valuable, being helpful, putting yourself out there pays off in a huge way. Um, this has been great. I really appreciate all that you shared. Where can, where can we find out more and get more of this, this gold and this strategy that you have? You know, um, my digi home is Michelle Uh, and then I also have, I have a free Facebook group that's called tame the marketing monster. And I answer tons of stuff in there and I do, you know, video tutorials and all sorts of stuff. So that's a good place as well. And it's free. There's no charge for that. Nice. Cool. Well, we'll have to check that out. We will have links to that in the show notes. But this has been this has been a really eye opening and helpful interview. I, I can't thank you enough for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Michelle. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the TrepX podcast. For more episodes, interviews, and business growth tools, please visit trepxgroup.com.